Now, while NBC News has not independently confirmed this, the New York Times and the Washington Post and ABC News have all identified Trump employee number two as his former executive assistant, a woman named Molly Michael. And ABC News reports that when Trump heard that the FBI wanted to talk to Ms. Michael last year, Trump didn't overtly tell Molly Michael to lie. It wasn't as straightforward as that. Instead, Trump reportedly told his assistant, Molly Michael, who he knew, knew a ton about these boxes, he reportedly told her, you don't know anything about the boxes. You don't know anything about those boxes. That kind of mafia-like doublespeak is really helpful as we try to begin to understand the former president's defense here. Just last week, Trump said this to my colleague, Kristen Welker. I want to ask you about the case related to Mar-a-Lago. A new charge suggests you asked a staffer to delete security camera footage so it wouldn't get into the hands of investigators. Did it's you do false. that? It's false. false. But let me tell you what Would else. you testify to that under oath? I'm going to I'll testify. You testify to that under yeah. oath? It's a fake okay. charge. Now, testifying under oath about whether or not he asked his staff to delete security footage does not sound like a great idea for Mr. Donald Trump. I mean, we know from the criminal indictment that on June 22nd, 2022, the Justice Department told Trump's lawyers that they were drafting a subpoena for security camera footage from Mar-a-Lago. And the next day, Trump had a 24-minute phone call with Mar-a-Lago's property manager, a gentleman named Carlos de Oliveira. A few days after that, de Oliveira pulled Mar-a-Lago's IT director into a closet and said, again, according to the indictment, the boss wanted the security camera server deleted. But if Donald Trump did have to testify about that, about whether he asked a member of his staff to delete security camera footage, what if his literal answer to that question is no? What if his instruction was more like, it would be a real shame if something were to happen to that security camera footage? I mean, it's, it's not a direct order to delete the footage, but the meaning is pretty clear. And that is the way, it seems, Trump operates. Say it, but don't actually say it. Remember Trump's lawyer, Evan Corcoran? After Trump got a federal subpoena demanding that Corcoran, that he, Trump, return all of the classified documents in his possession, Evan Corcoran noted that in a meeting about the subpoena, Trump asked him, well, what happens if we, what happens if we just don't respond at all or don't play ball with them? And before Evan Corcoran was set to return a folder of classified documents to the FBI, Trump didn't even use words. Evan Corcoran noted at the time that Trump made a funny motion as though, well, okay, why don't you take them with you to your hotel room? And if there's anything really bad in there, like, you know, pluck it out. And that was the motion he made. He didn't say that. <clears throat> Nothing direct, just hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Former White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson testified <clears throat> to the House January 6th committee that the lawyer Trump's team had set her up with instructed her, the less you remember, the better. Got that? The less you remember, the better. In 2019, Trump's former attorney <clears throat> and fixer Michael Cohen offered this explanation of Trump's penchant for thinly veiled suggestions. He doesn't give you questions. He doesn't give you orders. He speaks in a code. And I understand the code because I've been around him for a decade. You don't know anything about the boxes. The less you remember, the better. There is a lot of plausible deniability there, but there is also very clearly a pattern. Joining me now, Andrew Weissman, former FBI general counsel and a former senior member of special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation, and George Conway, lawyer and columnist. Thank you both for being here as I lose my voice steadily throughout the hour. Um, I'll talk. keep the... Don't worry, we'll talk a lot. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we're, we're that was our hope. Um, <laughs> let me first start with you, George. It is not... It is not subtle what Trump's strategy here is, right? It's literally... There's a reason the godfather imagery is around us. This is, like, out of... A Francis Ford Coppola movie. Um, can it work? No, not in this case, because there's just too much of it. If you had just one of these incidents, one in circumstance where, where he's saying, geez, what if we didn't have these documents to Corcoran? Maybe alone that might, you know, that you could, it wouldn't be enough. 
but you've got him moving the documents. You've got the, the direction about destroying the videotape footage. You've got now, you've got this um, statement that he made to Molly Michaels, which was is pretty close to basically saying, <laughs> you, you don't know, know anything you don't about know, that. You don't know anything about this when he knows damn well that she knew that there were more than 15 doc boxes that were turned, that, that, and the ones that were turned over to the government. You've got that. You've got the plucking cork and saying, what if did you just, you know, is there anything bad in there? You could just, yeah. You know, he's got that. His lawyer felt the compel to write all of that down. And then there's the telling, the telling, uh, to hiding, he was hiding the documents from Corcoran so that Corcoran wouldn't tell the government. Yes. He's, he just doesn't stop. And, and that's why all of this evidence, it just, it all fits together. And, and, you know, they, when we see, we see count 33 of the indictment and in, in, in the Mar-a-Lago indictment, which is the conspiracy to obstruct, they listed these things, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and they didn't put in the mall. They've got so much. Yeah. He, he's dead to rights in all this well, stuff. <laughs> George Conway has an opinion on this, and I believe dead to rights is the phrase he just used. Right. It is a we fair... We both use that phrase, to be honest. Okay. It's true. Independently. Andrew, it is, seems like a fairly rudimentary strategy, right? I'm not going to say the words, I'm going to wink, wink, and nudge, nudge my way through what could be criminal behavior. How do prosecutors go about proving that, you know, what Trump's actual intent was? Um, so this is what juries are for. Um, right. This is why you basically say to a jury to use your common sense. Um, but there's too many instances. This goes back to what someone rid me of this meddlesome priest. Let's just remember, we're talking about somebody who is the leader of the free world. This is basically time when you say to a jury, let's just grow up um, and look at this like an adult. What would you what would a president who wants to comply with the law be saying? They would be saying, have we turned everything over? Right. Have we found it? So you model what the right behavior is, and then you go through all of the things that he did. I have to say here, I don't think it's plausible deniability. I don't. I think it's implausible yeah. deniability. And let's just remember, it's not going to be denied because Donald Trump, no matter how many times he says now that he's willing to testify to it, I am 100% positive that's not happening for the same reason that I'm old enough to know that he said, don't worry, I'm going to come in and talk to you during the Mueller investigation. Yeah, you're old How enough to remember, go? yes. Yeah, that didn't happen. Um, and that, by the way, it was the right move for, for him. It would have been awful for him to come in and testify um, for us in the same way that it would be really a death knell if he went and testified in any of these cases. Andrew, why do you think we are getting this reporting, largely from ABC News, about Molly Michael? Why, why are details of her testimony leaking? Is this Molly Michael worried about her own legal peril? You know, I, I doubt that. Um, I, I assume that that has been resolved, that she has counsel and that has been worked out. If she is somebody who is um, is employee two in the indictment, then that's not something that the government has left dangling. That means that they are fairly confident that she would be a witness. Um, why it is leaking now, the one thing I will say is, obviously, if it comes from the government, it is correct to say it's a leak. If it comes from uh, Molly Michael or some lawyer who knows it, that's not a leak. I mean, mm -hmm. They're entitled to speak to whoever they want to speak to. Um, they are giving that information, but there's no law, there's no ethics rules that would prevent that. Um, why it's happening now, though, I don't know. It could be um, a whole variety of reasons, but it is happening. Um, and it seems, it seems entirely consistent with, as George said, all of the other information in the charge. And, and what keeps happening with each one of these nuggets of information that we get, Trump is Trump continues to do press, he continues to talk about it, and he continues to dig a hole for himself Absolutely. in terms of his own defense, right? Absolutely. It's going to be just a few minutes before someone asks him about what he said to and Molly and that's Michael. that's why he's never, ever going to—he he will be destroyed on the stand in about 30 seconds by any decent cross-examiner on almost any subject, because you just—you cannot pull the stuff that you could pull at, at a town hall or even in a one-on-one in -on -one interview with a good interviewer. Um, you, you just can't pull that, so you can't, you can't just fulminate on some other subject. You actually have to answer questions and get pinned down. Is everybody—is every, every—all these people, every single one of them, are they all lying? This one, that one, that one, that one. And you could draw him out. I mean, that's just one different, one of many techniques you could use. It's like, okay, so then the prosecutor, after asking those questions, say, so you heard it from the man himself. Everybody is lying except for him. Does that make any sense to you? George is ready for the, ready for cross. <laughs> I, I just saw, I saw yes. it. It was like right? Perry yes. Mason. Right.